Hello, hello, and welcome back to my read-along. Today we are doing part six, human. And let's face it, my girl here, she definitely looks like somebody I'd want in my party. That starts on 29 to continue with our races. Human. These were the stories of a restless people who long ago took to the seas and rivers in longboats, first to pillage and terrorize, then to settle. Yet there was an energy, a love of adventure, that sang from every page. Long into the night, Lyrell read, Lyrell read, lighting candle after precious candle. She'd never given much thought to humans, and yet these stories fascinated her. In these yellowed pages were tales of bold heroes, strange and fierce animals, mighty primitive gods, and magic that was part of, was part and fabric of that distant land. Elaine Cunningham, daughter of the Drow. In the reckonings of most worlds, humans are the youngest of the common races, late to arrive on the world scene and short-lived in comparison to dwarves, elves, and dragons. Perhaps it is because of their shorter lives that they strive to achieve as much as they can in their years that they are given. Or maybe they feel they have something to prove to the elder races and that's why they build their mighty empires on the foundation of conquest and trade. Whatever drives them, humans are the innovators, the achievers, and the pioneers of the worlds. A broad spectrum. With their penchant for migration and conquest, humans are more physically diverse than other common races. There is no typical human. An individual can stand from five feet to a little over six feet tall and weigh and range from 125 to 250 pounds. They lie in. I met some humans that are way over 250. <laughs> a couple months back, myself included. Ooh. Human skin shades range from nearly black to very pale, and hair colors from black to blonde, curly, kinky, or straight. Males might sport facial hair that is sparse or thick. A lot of humans have a dash of non-human blood, revealing hints of elf, orc, or other lineages. Humans reach adulthood in their late teens and rarely live even a single century. Oh, so many snarky things to say. Variety in all things. Humans are the most adaptable and ambitious people among the common races. They have widely varying tastes, morals, and customs in many different lands where they have settled. When they settle, though, they stay. They build cities to last for the ages and great kingdoms that can persist for long centuries. An individual human might have a relatively short lifespan, but a human nation or culture preserves traditions with origins far beyond the reach of any single human's memory. They live fully in the present, making them well-suited to the adventuring life, but also plan for the future, striving to leave a lasting legacy. Individually and as a group, humans are adaptable opportunists, and they stay alert to changing political and social dynamics. Expert here in green at the top of the next page. Everyone's second best friends. Always the bride maid, never the bride. Just as readily as they mix with each other, humans mingle with members of other races. They get along with almost everyone, though they might not be as close to many. Humans serve as ambassadors, diplomats, magistrates, merchants, and functionaries of all kinds. Dwarves. They're stout folk, stalwart friends, and true to their word. Their greed for gold is their downfall, though. Elves. It's best not to wander in elven woods. They don't like intruders, and you'll likely be bewitched as peppered with arrows. Still, if an elf can get past that damn racial pride and actually treat you like an equal, you can learn a lot from them. Halflings. 
It's hard to be a mule in a halfling home, as long as you don't crack your head on the ceiling. Good food and good stories in front of a nice warm fire. If halflings had a shred of ambition, they might really amount to something. <laughs> oh, so humans are just rude. Lasting institutions. Where a single elf or dwarf might take the responsibility for guarding a special location or powerful secret, humans found sacred orders and institutions for such purposes. While dwarf clans and halfling elders pass on ancient traditions to each new generation, human temples, governments, libraries, and codes of law fix their traditions in the bedrock of history. Humans dream of immortality, but, except for those who few who seek undeath or divine ascension to escape death's clutches, they achieve it by ensuring that they will be remembered after they are gone. Although some humans can be xenophobic, in general their societies are inclusive. Human lands welcome large number of non-humans compared to the proportion of humans who live in non-human lands. Exemplars of Ambition Humans who seek adventure are the most daring and ambitious members of a daring and ambitious race. They seek to earn glory in the eyes of their fellows by amassing power, wealth, and fame. More than other people, humans champion causes rather than territories or groups. Human names and ethnicities. Let's see if I can don't butcher this one. <laughs> Having so much more variety than other cultures, humans as a whole have no typical names. Some human parents give their children names from other languages, such as Dorvish or Elvish, pronounced more or less correctly. But most parents give names that are linked to their religion's culture, sorry, region's culture, or to naming traditions of their ancestors. The maternal culture and physical characteristics of humans can change wildly from region to region. In the Forgotten Realms, for example, the clothing, architectural, cuisine, music, and literature are all different in the northwestern lands of the Silver Marches than in the distic Termic or Im Impulter to the east, and even more distinctive in the far-off Karator. Human physical characteristics, though, vary according to the ancient migrations of the earliest humans, so that humans of the Silver Marches have every possible variation of coloration and features. In the Forgotten Realms, nine human ethnic groups are widely recognized, though over a dozen others are found in more localized areas of Ferun. These groups and typical names of their members can be used as inspiration no matter what world your human is in. Kalshite. Shorter and slighter in build than most other humans, Calcitites have dusky brown skin, hair, and eyes. They are primarily found in southwest Ferun. Calcitite names, male, Asir, Bardad, Hasid, Kamed, Memen, Sudaman, Zashir, female, Atala, Sildil, Hama, Jasmel, Melil, Sipora, Yashira, Yasade, Surmenames, Basha, Dumen, Jasin, Khalid, Mosatana, Pashar, Rain. <clears throat> Chandathan. Chandathan are slender, tawny skinned folk with brown hair that ranges from almost blonde to almost black. Most are tall and have green or brown eyes, but these traits are hardly universal. Humans of the Chantzadan descend from dominant, descent to dominate the central lands of Farun around the inner sea. Chandathan names, male, Darwin, Dorn, Evender, Gorstag, Grim, Helm, Malark, Morn, Randall, Stead. I got through all of them. Female. Arvine, Esvale, 
Jessel, Kerry, Lorraine, Miri, Rowan, Chandri, Tessaly. Surnames Amble Crown, Buckman, Dundragon, Evenwood, Greycastle, Tallstag. Damarin Found primarily in the northwest of Fadun, Damarins are of a moderate height and build with skin hues ranging from tawny to fair. Their hair is usually brown or black, and their eye color varies widely, though brown is most common. Damaran names are male, Boar, Fulder, Glar, Grigor, Eigen, Ivor, Kosef, Mivel, Orel, Par Pavel, Sior, Female, Elithra, Kara, Katurnin, Mara, Natali, Ulma, Tana, Zora. Surnames Berserk, Chernin, Dutsk, Kulnov, Maresk, Nemetisk, Shimov, Starag. Alusikan. Alusikans are tall, fair skinned folk with blue or steely gray eyes. Most have raven black hair, but those who exhibit in the extreme northwest have blonde, red, or light brown hair. Aluskan names Male, Endar, Blath, Bran, Frath, Gith, Lander, Luth, Malser, Stor, Taman, Uruth. Female, Amafrey, Betha, Silfrey, Kethra, Mara, Olga. Silifre, Westra. Surnames Brightwood, Heldar, Hornraven, Lackman, Stormwind, Winddriver. Mulan. Dominant in the eastern and southeastern shores of the Inner Sea, Mulan are generally tall, slim, and amber skinned, with eyes of brown or hazel. Their hair ranges from black to dark brown, but in the lands where the Mulan are most prominent, Nobles and many other Mulan shave off all their hair. Mulan names Alf, Baris, Eputki, Kethoth, Mumad, Ramas, Sokehir, Thazarde, Urther, Female, Arizima, Kathi, Nephis, Nulara, Maricia, sorry, Marisi, Sephiris, Sola, Umara, Zolis. Surnames Akhalab, Anskuld, Thezim, Hapet, Nethedem, Separate, Uthkrat. Rashimi. Most often found in the inner sea and often intermingled with the Mulan, Rashimis tend to be short, stout, and muscular. They usually have dusky skin, dark eyes, and thick black hair. Rashimi names Male Borivik Thawagar Jandar Kanithar Madislak, Ralmavik, Shulmar, Vladislak, female names, Fevara, Hulimara, Ilmlith, Imzil, Nevara, Shivara, Telmith, Ludra, surnames, Sergoba, Diarnina, Itzlaziara, Mern Yithara, Steangola, Angola. There's no L. I don't know why I keep doing L. I'm sorry. Stay on Olga, Ulmokina, Shu. The Shu are the far most numerous and powerful ethnic group in Karatul. 
far to the east of the Farun. They are yellowish, bronze in hue, with black hair and dark eyes. Shu surnames usually presented before their given name. Uh, here's the Asian culture. Male, An, Shen, Qi, Fa, Sheng, Jun, Lian, Long, Meng, On, Xiao, Xu, Wen. Female, Bai, Chao, Jia, Li, Me, Kyo. Xu Tai Xu Yi Xu Yi Xu Surnames Xian Huang Ko Kong Lao Ling Me Pin Xin Xu Tan Wan Cesarian Widespread along the entire sword coast in the western edge of Fadun. Tethrins are a mil medium build and height with dusky skin and tend to grow fairer and the farther north they dwell. Their hair and eye color varies widely, but brown hair and blue eyes is the most common. Tethrians primarily use Chodothian names. Turami. Native to the southern shore of the Inner Sea, the Turami people are generally tall, muscular, with dark mahogany skin, curly black hair, and dark eyes. Tsurami names, male. Anton, Dero, Marcon, Piron, Rimardo, Romeo, Slazar, Salazar, Umbro. Female. Palama, Donna, Fala, Jalana, Luisa, Marta, Chiara, Celis, Vonda. Surnames Augusto, Ustoro, Calebra, Domine, Folona, Marivaldi, Piscar, Romando. Human traits. It's hard to make generalizations about humans, but your human character has these traits. Ability score increase. Your ability scores in each increase by one. Age. Humans reach adulthood in their late teens and live less than a century. Alignment. Humans tend toward no particular alignment. The best and worst are found among them. Size. Humans vary widely in height and build, from barely five foot to well over six feet tall. Regardless of your position in that range, your size is medium. Speed. Your base walking speed is 30 feet. Languages. You can speak, read, and write common and one extra language of your choice. Humans typically learn the language of the people that they deal with, including obscure dialects. They are fond of sprinkling their speech with words borrowed from other tongues. Orc curses, elvish musical expressions, dwarvish military phrases, and so on. Next little expert at the very bottom of 31. If your campaign uses optional feat rules from chapter 6, your dungeon master might allow these variant traits of all, which replace the human ability score increase trait. Ability score increase. Two different ability scores choice increased by one feet you gain one feet of your choice skills you gain proficiency in one skill of your choice and that is the end of human so I hope that you enjoyed reading along with me and that you learned something or got to have a giggle um, Hopefully I will be able to continue to put out these videos as often as I can. Yay! So thank you again. This is the reading of the D&D Player's Handbook for Edition 5.